Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is another vintage G.I. Joe vehicle unboxing and assembly video. This is the 1993 G.I. Joe Star Brigade Starfighter and the Pilot Sci-Fi. And this box is not sealed. It is open at one end. It, it wasn't sealed when I got it. So we're not opening a new box, but I have confirmed that everything is in the box. Uh, so I will be assembling this vehicle for the first time. I will also be taking the action figure out of its factory sealed bag, so we'll be taking a look at that. I actually am doing this because I intend to review this soon. Uh, but you should see the review of this vehicle and figure before you see the unboxing. Uh, but I've got to put this stuff together so I can review it. These vehicle unboxing and assembly videos are usually pretty fun. Uh, you may remember I did this for the, uh, the Mega Marines Monster Blaster. And I really enjoy this. It's very nostalgic. Uh, it kind of just takes me back to my childhood when I would get G.I. Joe vehicles and opening them up and assembling them. And, you know, putting them together myself kind of made me feel like the vehicle was really mine. So, we're going to do that with the Starfighter, uh, and so I've got my tools here. Uh, I've got a few tools that I might need in uh, putting it together and putting the stickers on. Uh, so without uh, further introduction, let's open this up, uh, pull the parts out, and put them together. Alright, as I said, one end is open. It was open when I got it. It wasn't sealed or anything. Um, and uh, this box is intact. It's got the file card. Uh, it's got the flag point. Nothing's been cut out of it. It is a nice intact box. Uh, so let's uh, open this end. And uh, like the Monster Blaster, uh, it has a cardboard tray in here and all the parts are in it. So we just slide the tray out. And there are our parts. And it looks like we have the bottom half. We have the top half. We have the tail and the rocket engine cones. Um, we have, oh, of course, the action figure, Sci-Fi, and his accessories in the sealed bag. Open that. I'll probably do that uh, last. And let's see, we have some plastic trees with some parts on it, but it looks like, oh uh, yeah, a couple of the missiles have broken loose. So we've got some missiles that have popped off of the plastic tree, but one of them is still on. Um, and we've got another plastic tree with the gold colored parts and those are both still on there so we'll pop that off as well we have the spring-loaded uh, missile launcher um, that comes separately and uh, we have a poly bag with the um, with the canopy so we'll open that sealed bag and oh we have the uh, rubbery nose cone uh, we have the sticker sheet with unapplied stickers, and we have uh, tucked here uh, with the catalog, the 1993 catalog, we have the instructions and blueprints, uh, and there is that catalog. This is what I was hoping to get with the Monster Blaster. Um, this, here it is, the 1993 catalog. So I will have fun looking through that. All right, um, I have uh, all the pieces kind of laid out in front of me here, and I have the instruction sheet open. Uh, and I was just looking through this 93 catalog and uh, at all the crazy, wacky things they introduced that year. Uh, it was definitely a very colorful year, I can say that. Uh, so let's um, take a look at the instructions and see what we are supposed to do first. It looks like uh, they want us to assemble the body first. Um, so that looks pretty simple. Um, it looks like uh, we take the bottom half and the top half and we just mesh them together. Uh, looks like it has some tabs that fit into some holes there so it's easy to line up. Um, and I guess you just press until it snaps. front part's a little tougher to snap together. All right, now I want to be careful. I don't want to break it. Oh, I see where it goes. Okay. Yep, there. And that goes in there. Very good. All right, it was more difficult than I expected to snap that body together. Um, 
some of those um, tabs didn't want to line up very well. It's easier to put the back half on than the uh, front half. The right, front half just did not want to line up very well. Um, but it looks like that's about as good as it's going to get. So uh, let's go to the next part we need to put on this nose comb. And it looks like there's a notch right there. Uh, and there's a little tab right there on the bottom part of the uh, body of the vehicle. And this is rubbery, so in theory this should kind of just um, just fit on. I should be able to like just put it on like a blanket, like an overcoat. But this just isn't going to be easy either, is it? Okay, there's no secret to this. I just kind of had to work it until the rubber fit over the uh, that little um, nose there on the body so there it is on and good it's actually fitting the way it's supposed to uh, but again not as easy to fit that on there as I expected it to be what's next um, the rocket cones the blue rocket engines and it looks like those just snap on how do they snap on it looks like we have some knobs um, air at the top and there should or some notches at the top and there should be a tab and it looks like it goes on like this so should be able to just press it until it clicks right uh, don't fight with me starfighter see this this is why 1993 not my favorite year the vehicles want to fight with me they don't want to just snap together easily like they're supposed to again there's no secret easy way to do it I just have to press it on until it goes all the way on and make sure that notch is lined up and just kind of force it of course I don't like forcing old plastic but it's strong enough and it fits okay they're both on what is next uh, we have um, looks like we're supposed to put the tail on uh, and the gold uh, plastic hoses. So the tail is here. So that will go on like, oh, I see, like that. Oh, that was easy. Hey, the first part of this vehicle that was actually easy to put on. The tail is on. Now, um, let's see. We need to uh, break these hoses off of the tree and I'm going to use my exacto knife to carefully snip them off like so and there they are they are free for the first time ever from their plastic tree um, now uh, does it matter which way they go it doesn't look like it does no it does okay uh, the long end goes at the back. There we go. So, um, yeah, there's um, on the clips that connect them, there's a short one and a long one. The long one goes in the back. And I can see that makes sense. So, just pop those on. Front end and then back end. Okay. The other one. Pop that on. Um, let's see here. Looks like the front end is a little tougher to fit in. But there we go. There. Okay. Gold hoses are on. The next part, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, it looks like they want us to uh, put the spring loaded missile launcher on next so that goes in this hole here on the underside of the nose um, it looks e pretty easy to assemble pretty straightforward um, just press that in looks like it just frictions in uh, it does not clip in that that's all right though uh, that means it can rotate a bit so that's that's that that was easy oh and the other missiles um, let's see the missiles we can put on the vehicle and we've got one that has not already broken off the plastic tree so let's use our exacto knife to snip that off and put the lid back on the knife safety first and 
these have the uh, dumbbell shaped slots that fit on the pegs under the starfighters so let's just pop those on real quick uh, there uh, that's number three and number four before we put number four in let's go ahead and pop it into the spring-loaded launcher and give it a little test. Let's test it out. Oops, oops. One of them fell off. Let's put it back. There we go. Now, spring-loaded launcher. Let's see here. Does it work? Fire. Ooh, it does work, and it's pretty powerful, too. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let's uh, just slide that on. And there we go. Now, next is... Let's see, the uh, gold cover for the, um, for the, uh, where the tail connects. Uh, let's free that from its plastic prison. This should be the last thing we really need to snip off. There. And, oops. Um, and, let's see. Uh, Wait, which way does it go? Um, it's the same both ways, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right, so it just pegs in. Uh, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Looks like there's something I'm supposed to do first. All right, see? Got to actually read the instructions. Uh, we need to put the canopy on first, and then put the little gold cap on. So, uh, let's open. Move these out of the way. Let's open the sealed bag with the canopy in it. Okay, like that. Taking the canopy out. And it looks like the canopy fits on um, more or less exactly the same way that the, the tail did. Uh, so we will put these tabs, sorry, we will put these tabs it doesn't slip out of my hands. Put the tabs in these holes here. Should be enough flex for that to fit in. There, and the canopy, let's make sure it gets on and fits properly. There, the canopy is on, and it's a pretty tight fit. And now, the gold cap. This should be the last piece before we start putting the stickers on just pegs in. That's all it does. But it's pretty firm. Uh, Alright. It's putting a lot of pressure on that plastic piece that I don't really want to. And I don't like that. So why are we putting a lot of pressure on a relatively thin plastic piece? Uh, let's see. Almost on. It doesn't look like it has like a a clip, it's just a, a peg that fits in a hole. So you just have to press it in until it's all the way on. It's not going to snap together or anything like that. Okay, that looks that looks to be on. Okay, that's pretty solid and I didn't break anything. So, the canopy should open. There we go. The tail fin should pop up. Oh, nope, nope. We do not have a good assembly on this, so I'm going to try that again. All right, I discovered two things about this plastic cover. Um, first of all, you have to get it uh, pressed far enough down that the canopy will clear it and the tail will also clear it. Um, also, it looks like there is um, a little um, kind of half moon shape detail on it, and I think that's supposed to be facing toward the back. So uh, maybe it doesn't fit either way. Um, it seems to fit a little bit better with that facing the rear of the vehicle. Uh, and I've got it pressed down to where it does work. The tail fin pops up, uh, the canopy pops up, and does not. Uh, is not obstructed by that cover. So I think we finally have it assembled correctly. That canopy is a tight fit though. It will open uh, and it will close, but man, that is tight. With the vehicle assembled, it is time to put the stickers on. And it looks like uh, the sticker instructions are on uh, 
uh, this side, the side with the blueprints. Uh, there are a lot of changes uh, by 1993 to our vehicle blueprints. Um, the uh, 80s blueprints, frankly, were much nicer, uh, much more, had a lot more uh, descriptions on it. And it had like the grid lines that are missing on this one, but it's okay, that's okay. Uh, 1993, uh, what can I say? Uh, so let's go ahead and put the stickers on. Um, I have my tweezers, and it looks like these are uh, paper stickers. These are not vinyl stickers. Um, of course, I prefer vinyl, but uh, it's okay. Um, we've got a white background on a white vehicle. You're not going to notice that much anyway. So what should we do? I burped there, so cut that part out. So what should we do first? Uh, it looks like... Let's put the Starfighter uh, name on the side. Um, we have two stickers marked number four. So let's take one of them and put our first sticker on carefully. There we go. And let's see, make sure I'm placing it right. Goes right there. Try to get it nice and straight. No, straighter than that. These paper stickers, when you're applying them, seem to be less forgiving than the vinyl stickers. On the vinyl stickers, um, if you laid it less than perfectly the first time, you can kind of pull them up and uh, set them again. But uh, it looks like the glue on these paper stickers doesn't want you to do that. Once it on, it's on there, it's kind of sealed, kind of cemented on. So let's do number two and put this one on. And I have to say, I think this is my favorite part of the vehicle assembly uh, process. Placing the stickers on is kind of a zen experience. Trying to make sure they get properly placed and they are as straight as they can be. That's about as good as I'm going to get that. Very nice. Now I like to use these videos when I can to just talk with you guys, and I haven't done that very much in this video, uh, but I do want everyone out there to know how much I appreciate uh, you, appreciate you watching these videos, appreciate you everything you've done for me. Um, I do these videos every week, and I, I do put a lot of work into them, but I have to say, you have done a lot more for me than I feel like I've done for you. Um, you, uh, you've been very supportive. You've been a, a great audience, um, great friends, and um, that means more to me than, than even than G.I. Joe or the videos themselves. Uh, making contacts with people, um, making new friends, uh, that is what this is really about. Um, and so thank you for everything that you've done. Um, I follow another toy review channel that recently... Um, reached 200,000 subscribers. That's pretty impressive. Um, I don't have anywhere near that, but you know what? That's fine. Um, because to me, this channel has already been a great success. Uh, the channel has already surpassed any expectations I had for it. Uh, we've already been successful. It's impossible for the channel to fail now. Because uh, because we've already made it a success. Uh, we have already won um, by just by doing this and by bringing um, a lot of G.I. Joe fans together, um, by uh, fostering a good, positive community, um, and by just enjoying our time together and enjoying these old toys and the nostalgia and the great memories they uh, give us. Um, so, uh, so uh, thank you. I mean, I, I can't do that myself. Um, to do that myself, I would basically just be sitting here talking to myself. But the fact that uh, you are supportive and you watch the show means that I'm not just talking myself. I'm talking to a lot of people um, who share this interest um, and a lot of folks that I have come to call friends. And we have an event coming up in a few months. Uh, JoeCon 2018 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, it looks like this is going to be the last JoeCon. 
Um, Hasbro has not renewed the contract with Fun Publications, the organization that puts the official G.I. Joe convention on. Um, so this is the last year. We thought it was going to be a couple years ago, but at the last minute, Hasbro decided to extend the contract two more years. So we thought 2016 was going to be the end, uh, but we got a, a reprieve to 2018. But it doesn't look like the sentence will be commuted. It looks like 2018 really is the final show. So, of course, I will be there. Uh, that will be my fifth one, I think. I think it'll be number five. I lose track. I, uh, I think 2014. 2014 was my first one. So 2014, it was a 2015, 2016. 2017 last year in Florida. And then, yeah, that'll be my fifth one. Um, so uh, I'm hoping, since it's the last one, we can make it a really good one, and uh, make it um, make it one for the record, you know, one for the books. Make it a big one that's just a big gathering of uh, of friends, uh, a big gathering of people. Um, and uh, I know a lot of you guys go for the exclusive convention sets, the, the action figures that you can only get at the convention. Um, and if you like those things, then great, I'm glad that you do. But those things never mattered to me, really. Uh, I don't go there to get exclusive stuff. I go there because people are there, people who share a passion for this hobby and, you know, in my everyday life, I don't get that. I don't have uh, a lot of great fans in my area. Now, there are some, and, and I'm very happy to meet those folks, but we don't have a huge G.I. Joe community just here in this local area. Um, so I can't just go uh, somewhere and uh, have a nice chat with a, a lot of other G.I. Joe fans. So for me, JoeCon is... Uh, that's the real event, is um, the real opportunity to go and just talk about folks that, that actually care about G.I. Joe, that remember G.I. Joe the way I do. Um, and that's special to me, and that's what I will miss. Um, it looks like some Joe fans might be trying to put together... Um, the next generation of G.I. Joe focus conventions, something that's done by the fans. It's not official from Hasbro, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm hoping that uh, the fan community will create the replacement for Joe Con. It doesn't have to be Hasbro official. It doesn't have to have, you know, officially released exclusive figures. Not to me. Uh, because to me, that's not what the important thing was anyway. The important thing is you guys. So, let's see. I do love putting these stickers on. That's my favorite thing. Uh, thanks to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. Um, it is always humbling to me when someone uh, decides to support the channel in that way. Um... And it has been invaluable. Um, I mean, it has really uh, made a big difference. I have been able to replace my equipment, upgrade the equipment, just in general make the show better. Um, and that that's due to the support that I get from you guys uh, through Patreon. And um, it's just really thrilling to me. I mean, the show started out pretty humbly with uh, an old camera uh, that was, uh, I think, just barely qualified in it as an HD camera. It was barely HD, like pretty old generation HD camera. Uh, but that's all I had. And I just kind of pointed the camera at an action figure and talked about it. Um, didn't work very much from a script and zero editing. So, of course, you got all of my stuttering and pauses 
and uh, mistakes and uh, those early videos are pretty pretty boring uh, I didn't do very much to spice them up uh, but I thought eventually maybe I should put a little more effort into these you know I do enjoy looking at the toys um, but I think if people are going to watch they deserve a little bit more effort so I started doing some editing actually um, cutting things to together a little bit better I started writing out uh, not a script in fact I still don't really work from a script um, but notes I was making notes about what I wanted to say about each of the toys and um, I started out only only behind the camera I wasn't appearing in front of the camera at all um, and some of you may prefer it that way but uh, now you just have no choice you have to see my face um, so the, the the videos have evolved quite a bit since the beginning and I hope that it's been for the better I certainly enjoy making them more they are harder to make they take more time, but they are more enjoyable to make. Uh, I have more fun doing them, and I hope you have more fun watching them. I know that it's not going to be everyone's bag, right? Not everyone's going to like it, and that doesn't bother me at all. Believe me, um, the fact that I displease or disappoint people on the Internet does not keep me up at night at all um, but you know I have a style and I think some people enjoy it but I can't please everyone so I don't try that is the last sticker we now have an empty sticker sheet um, the stickers on this one are are minimal but effective um, they are paper stickers um, with a white background. You can kind of see that. Um, I don't think we have any bubbles, and they're mostly pretty straight. May not have been perfect, but uh, that's okay. I might have lined them up a little bit uh, straighter if I hadn't been talking to you guys. You guys keep distracting me while I'm trying to put this thing together. Uh, but that's okay. I forgive you this time. Uh, it's, it's fine. Um, there it is. So that was a lot of fun. I just, I do really enjoy putting the stickers on. That's my favorite part. So that leaves us with one more thing, and that is the pilot. Let's open up sci fi. This is the third version of sci fi. Am I blanking on that? Um, I think it's the third version from 1993. Uh, this is basically a white version of the gray sci-fi uh, that we got earlier from, what, 1991, I think? And then, of course, the first sci-fi was 1986 in the neon green. So, that's kind of funny. Uh, this is the one figure that started out neon in the 80s uh, and got uh, more subdued colors as he went on. Of course, white isn't all that subdued, but you know what? It works for a pilot. Let's pop him out. And there we are. This is the first time this action figure has ever been touched. Um, how is his O-ring? Pretty tight. Not bad. Looks like, do we have a... I think we have a little bit of uh, paint here on his hip. It looks like they missed on the paint a little bit. Not perfect. Interesting. Slight quality control issue. Um, the joints, of course, as you'd expect, are tight for a figure that has never been played with. Um, of course, I will review this pretty soon, and I'll have to move them all around to show you the articulation. Uh, yeah, nice to see a more or less perfect figure. Except for a little blob of paint there. I don't think that's supposed to be there. That's okay. Uh, let's see. He came with a couple accessories. He came with a helmet. And that is 
uh, a fairly hard plastic helmet. I was actually thinking that might be a softer plastic, um, but that's a hard plastic. Maybe it's a little softer than the standard um, accessory plastic, but not very much. And so we put that on his head, and ooh, that's a tight fit. There we go. Fits on his head, and he comes with a laser pistol. Both the helmet and the laser pistol have knobs on them because these are just reissued from the earlier version, and uh, that those had hoses that connected them. Of course, this doesn't have the connector hoses, um, but they still have the knobs. That's one of the consequences of having basically just a reissued figure, but not all of the accessories are reissued. So there is Sci-Fi. I don't know if he will fit in his cockpit with his laser weapon. So let's try to find out. Let's put Sci-Fi in there. And can I... No, it doesn't really work. Not with him holding the weapon. So let's put him in there. Can I... Now, I don't like leaving accessories just out like this. Like, if I don't put it in here with him, it's just going to get lost. But then I'm worried that if I place it in here, it might fall down in one of the crevices there. It might be difficult to get out. But I'm going to risk it because uh, otherwise I'll definitely lose this. So I'm just going to lay that across his chest, close the canopy, and we have... Ooh, that's tight. Come on. That canopy is a tight fit. There we go. Um, we have the complete and assembled G.I. Joe Starfighter from 1993. You probably know this vehicle is also a reissue of the Cobra Stellar Stiletto with a few differences. Um, it has the spring-loaded missile launcher uh, and the missiles that go with it. That's different uh, from the Cobra version. And of course it's white instead of red. Uh, I am partial to the red, but it's, this is acceptable. It's fine for what it, what it is. But we did it. We assembled a, a, a 1990s G.I. Joe vehicle, fresh out of the box. Not a sealed box, uh, but we did have uh, some sealed parts, sealed action figure, fresh sticker sheet, um, and some of the... Uh, pieces were still on the plastic trees, so we got to break those out. We still got mostly the experience of assembling uh, a brand new vehicle. Thank you everyone for watching this vehicle, and thank you everyone for watching any of my uh, videos. This is really awesome and special. There's the, the box, there is the Starfighter with, uh, with sci-fi in it, and his little silver laser gun. Uh, thanks again. Uh, thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, by the time you see this, you will have already seen a review for this, uh, but now you can see where it came from. I actually um, opened this thing up and assembled it myself, uh, and everything is crisp and new. It, it's hard to get much more mint than that. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoyed the review of it. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. I'll be back next time with a full G.I. Joe toy review. I hope to see you there, and I hope to see you at JoeCon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.